if if I had to describe myself uh, to someone, um, I would say I'm an artist. Um, I'm an author. I am a teacher, um, and not necessarily all in that order. I love, 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 out of all those, I love to teach the most. Doing a piece of art is like walking in a fence. And you're walking on a fence, and the whole time you're working, it could fall on the left side, and be a piece of trash, or it could fall on the right side and be a masterpiece. I have to teach all the time or I would, would not be happy. And the biggest thing that I want people to learn is how to be creative thinkers. I want them to learn how to solve problems and they can easily solve problems by learning art and learning how to do their art because of all the decision making from beginning to end. I would be happy without painting, but I have to paint. The pain is like this parasite that eats inside of you that you can't stop unless you get it down onto the surface. I first started doing art for sale uh, back in the 70s and 80s. It was uh, the time of photorealism. I got through the portrait stage, the pen and ink stage, the graphite stage, not necessarily material stage, but the stage where I wanted to be able to capture faces, capture people, um, capture landscapes. And once you can draw those, if you draw something that exactly the way it looks, you own it. It's, it's a possession thing. It progressed from there to the same way that most abstract progresses it got simpler and simpler and simpler and i would go back and forth i would go back to realism then pull back to more abstract and i think the the greatest move to abstract was the time in which when i was working on my mfa when i realized that i had to stop thinking i had to stop planning all my work i had been a teacher for 20 years already and I planned every second. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be able to be more spontaneous and that spontaneity is what led me to abstract. And once I started with paint, it was a very freeing experience and I would just pour the paint, move it around and I'm going, hmm, this isn't so bad. The painting it was, it's an entire different medium. It's not at all related to drawing especially because it allows you to just get all into the ooze of the paint and the way it feels on your fingers and the way you see it run into each other. And it's just a, a wonderful tactile experience. The best way I've come up with to explain abstract art is when you hear music, wherever you are, that has no lyrics. You don't turn to the person next to you and, and go with the song, I don't get this song because you don't need to get this song. You are just feeling the song where there's no reason to ask for an explanation of abstract art if you just think about it as instrumental music for your eyes. If the artist is successful, you're gonna feel, whether it's recognizable or not. And if you feel when you look at that abstract art, then you have achieved the music that you get when you listen. Uh, it just happens to come through your eyes instead of through your ears. The book 
Even though my first degree is in English, um, the title of the book is Just Painted Ain't. When people look at art, they're not just looking at materials. They're looking at so much from the artist, so much from the soul, so much work, so much effort, so much angst coming out of people who are super insecure and they don't realize that it is more than just paint. But the crux of the book is how to help artists and viewers talk together because they are a marriage, they are connected to each other, they don't realize the effect they have on each other. This is who viewers are. Uh, people who love art. How many of you love art? Why should I ask? How many of you don't love art? <laughs> uh, and support artists, which I know all of you do, maybe because you're here. And they wish they could make art. It's also for artists to say, okay, first of all, take a look at your work. Is your work worthy enough to to gather information from viewers that can help you? Or are there just basic principles that you're not following? Are you throwing something in the middle of the page? Are you not thinking about the composition? Are you not thinking about trying to pull them into the piece and let them stay? I mean, the work has to do the job too. It can't just be you talking to the viewer. Okay, who are artists? We all love art, we all love support artists too, but the difference is we actually make this stuff. Artists think that they are controlling art history by making a product and they don't realize it's the reception of that product. How do viewers receive that product and relay that information back to the artist that also plays as big a role in creating art history? If I can have the entire world learning how to talk to each other, then I'll take artists and the viewers that support them and learn how they can talk to each other. I'll do that first. And then, step by step, teaching them how to talk and be able to communicate beautifully with artists and artists can communicate beautifully with viewers and create and change art history. It's a small goal. I'm Kim Zabia. I'm Kim. I'm Kim Zabia. Kim, how Zabia? I am Kim Zabia. <laughs> what more do you need?